Hey guys, Barfax here. Today I'm bringing you what I believe to be one of the absolute best builds you can play in New World. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, before we start this video, I do want to let you know that there will be more content coming in the future. Starting next week, we will be back on to making regular content. We're going to give you little snippets. We're going to give you tips, tricks, builds, all that kind of good stuff. But today I wanted to bring you a video on the build that I've been running pretty much since the game has launched. We will soon be starting to go to other builds and stuff like that. As you can see here, we've started leveling up a lot of our weapons. We have Fire Staff Max, we have Ice Island almost Max, we have Spear, Sword and Shield, we have Hatchet. We're gonna start leveling Bow and Musket. We're gonna level up all of these weapons. But I wanted to bring you the build that I have been playing and it is absolutely a monster. All right, so let's get into it. We're gonna try to go through as quick as possible because there can be a lot of things to say and do and stuff like that. But we're gonna try to go over it really quickly and to start it off, we're going to talk about the Great Axe. This build is basically a Great Axe build. We do have a Warhammer here, and we're going to tell you how I use each and every one of them. We are going to have clips at the end. We're going to try to make this portion pretty quickly so we can get a lot of clips there in the end so you can see how the build works. But like I said, let's talk about the Great Axe. Now, when it comes to Great Axe, here's the tree. We're not going to go over every passive, but we're going to talk about a couple specifically. Now, I know a lot of you really don't like fatal attraction but you can see in my clips fatal attraction is absolutely insane this is essentially free damage what i mean is when you actually do a reap there is a essentially a global cooldown after you hit your reap and inside that global cooldown fatal attraction takes place so it is free damage and i have killed probably legitimately a hundred plus people with fatal attraction by itself it is really good. Trust me, trust me, trust me. This ability is good. I know a lot of people don't like it, but you can see in the clips, it is actually really good. We're putting just one point into charge. We really don't need any of this. We'll talk about how I use charge here in a minute. And then of course, we're running gravity well with crowded well, pretty good. Uh, there is some bugginess to it, but they're working on it. And it's still really good. You can see all the passives here. We're not gonna talk about all of them. We are gonna talk about one specific one and that is enduring strike what this does this gives you grit and it gives you a 20 percent damage reduction you can see grit is added stagger resistance that stops attacks from being interrupted by reactions so you're not going to get staggered while you have this and essentially it gives you 20 percent damage reduction as well so when we're doing large scale wars and we don't need to catch somebody you're going to be trying to hold down your heavy attack a lot it is insane damage it is great burst and it is damage reduction and stagger resistance it is absolutely insane you need to be heavy attacking more i don't see enough great axe users heavy attack we do have a passive up here the light attacks with your great attacks give you five percent damage bonus for five seconds with a max stack of three you can light attack a couple times fully charge heavy attack into a reap of the fatal attraction and it will legitimately decimate your opponents now when it comes to charge, we're gonna use this offensively and defensively. When you see some Eclipse in War, a lot of times I will do my fully charged heavy attack into a Reap Fatal Attraction, and then I will do another fully charged heavy attack into a charge. Charge at the end of the animation, I'll show you here in a second. It does that sweeping animation. You can see I like was sweeping up with my weapon. That's actually an AOE. So when you actually hit somebody, the tracking of your weapon will actually hit the players. So you can actually do an AOE with it. So you just do like, boom, you do the fatal, or you do that, it gives you the fatal attraction. Then you do another heavy attack into the charge. Now, obviously there's a person in front of you. It'll instantly stop it, but it's a lot of burst damage. It's a lot of burst AOE. It is a great way to finish off targets. It's a great way to catch targets. It's just overall an absolute great ability. Now we have all of this kind of taken place. Let's tell you why I specifically chose these over the others. Um, if we have a charge, like I said, it is a gap closer. It is a damaging burst tool. It is absolutely great. Reap is gonna allow you to catch and deal extra damage with one skill. It is absolutely great. In Gravity Well, it's really there for the catch and to hold people in place. It does do a little bit of damage. And if you have a bunch of people in there, it does a decent amount more. But overall, it doesn't do that much damage in the great scheme of things. One heavy attack will do more than this gravity well. So keep that in mind. But it is a great ability and probably the staple ability for the great axe. 
So essentially how you play this build and how, what abilities or what classes can kind of be bad against it. So for the most part, since we are wearing heavy, which we'll get into a second, we're gonna be a very much a bruiser class. We're gonna be looking at soaking damage and we are going to chase down our targets. You are with this, uh, this build, you can use your auto attacks to lunge, which it's not doing that right now because I don't have anybody near me, but you can auto attack the lunge and you can basically not allow anybody to get away. Now, when it comes to the mage class, which will be the second worst class that you'll actually play against or the one class that can beat you the most, it's all about getting on top of them and staying on top of them. What you have to do is you have to use your three CC abilities on your great ax to kind of counter what they're doing. Don't just charge reap gravity well like you don't want to do that if you do that you're going to lose they're going to be able to do an ice shower they're going to keep you in place they're going to cut you out because they're in light armor you don't want to do that what you do is you proc your bloodlust passive which if you don't know what it is it gives you 30 percent movement speed and 15 percent more damage if you're facing a target so what you do is you'll just dodge you can do the dodge cancel you can do the dodge cancel by sheathing your weapon or you can do dodge cancel by swapping your weapons and you're going to be dodging the spells you're going to throw they're going to throw at you you're just going to keep charging at them they're going to be backing up trying to hit you so they're going to be naturally going slower so you continue dodge sheath your weapon or swamp get your cancels off and then when you get to them that's when you can start doing your auto attacks this is going to force them to do a move this is most of them are either going to do their burnout they're going to use their dodge when they use their move you can do something like you can do the charge on them and then continue auto attacking them they're gonna still they're the one that has to get away from you because you're gonna be able to stay on them with your bloodlust and then once they'll put down their ice shower whenever they put down their ice shower you can do one of two things you can reap them back you can charge them if it's up or if they're close enough you can actually use your lunge from the heavy attack or the light attack to actually gap close you can actually kind of get out of the slow by if they're close enough getting them with the auto attack once you do that, make sure you don't use your gravity well until they use their burnout. Once they use their burnout, slap them in the gravity well, get them stuck, and you're all good. Next is the bow. The bow essentially is just going to cut you out. The bow, if they are very good, uh, it's going to be very hard to beat them. If you win a bow fight, it's because they didn't play it properly. They sh you should never be able to catch a bow user. Even with your bloodlust passive, they can still outrun you. So... Uh, in that case you just got to try to flank them from behind and catch them slacking hit them with a good gravity well into the reef you got to kind of burst them down before they can just run away from you all right so those are the two kind of bad matchups when it comes to the melee matchups it's pretty self-explanatory you're just going to try to outburst them whenever the hatchet get him down he's dead he's going to be procking you know his defy death you just got to make sure you block play defensively as soon as it up you have so much catch you can just catch him it's really easy so next we're going to talk about the warhammer we're not going to go over the warhammer too much because uh, in for the most part shockwave and clear out are going to be only things that you use in very uh you know different circumstances if you're doing large scale war shockwave is absolutely insane and clear out is one of your bread and butter skills the one thing you can do is if you do catch somebody in a gravity well you could run up to them you can heavy attack them into a clear out you will have time then you can give another another heavy attack and when they get up you can do path of destiny the thing you have to remember about path of destiny is you got to make sure you're actually leading your target when i try to you'll see in some of the clips when i'm hitting my path of destiny if that turkey down there is what i'm trying to hit and let's say they're actually moving pretty fast so we're going to miss this turkey but if it's moving that way i'm throwing it this way I am trying to judge where they're going to be, where my path of destiny is. Now, it, you can dodge it, but for the most part, people don't look to dodge it, and you can still hit it most of the time. It's it's a fairly easy skill to hit because of its large hitbox. If you use it properly, this is an absolutely amazing skill. Other than that, you're just going to heavy attack and do your clear out to get a little bit extra CC on the target, and then you can use shockwave to kind of, if you get in the back line, boom, you can pop them with a shockwave. And you can give them like a maybe a fully hard charge heavy attack get to another path of destiny keep them stayed in one place so you can absolutely nuke them down so let's just go over the tree here for a second in the warhammer you can see here i have those three abilities we are running aftershock i tried a few other abilities i tried 
Wrecking Ball, I tried Armor Breaker, and I tried Mighty Gavel, even with the Ultimate, and it really just wasn't that good. These are very, very good. For the most part, we're not going to be damaging mostly on this side of the tree, or I'm sorry, on this bar, but we're going to use it for mainly CC, but don't underestimate the damage that this can actually output, especially with your heavy attacks. It can do a lot of damage. It is more single target than a cleave like your Great Axe, but it can do a lot of damage. Next, let's talk about my attributes. Now, my attributes are a little messed up. We will actually put on my gear so you can see what I'm currently wearing, what my attributes are. So we are running 260 con and 186 strength. Now, the big thing here is I like to put my con at 260 because if I go into a war or something like that, I can use 40 con food to get that all the way up to 300. And then I'm putting the rest in strength. Once I get up to 200, I get all 600 gear it will be the 200 strength, uh, 300 con. So you have 500 points to play here. When you have your food, when you have full 600 gear, and that's where I like to keep my stats at, I do find that you need 150 to 160 strength before the build starts to feel really good. So if you are on a little bit lower gear, maybe you're not quite 60, I try to get that strength up to about 150, 160, and then just put the rest into con. And then once you can get 260 points into con, you can go back to putting strength. One thing to quick note, this passive right here, increase max health by 10% of your physical armor. In order to actually proc this, if it's not on, you have to take off all of your gear. Let's take off these. And if your attribute points are at least 100, you have to log out, log back on, and it will have it if you don't have it, it is a bug. Now with me, the fact that mine's 93, I actually have to respect, go to 100. Then take off my gear, log out, come back in, and then I will have the the 10% uh, max health for your physical armor. So there's that. Make sure you have that. I didn't have it for the longest time. Actually, in all the clips you see, I actually didn't have it. I recently just changed it. So take that with what you will. But yes, we are running 260 con and the rest into strength. Now for the gear. We are running a very simple gear. Almost everything that you see was this setup. Now... When this comes out, Resilient will be supposedly fixed, but still the faction gear is still really good because it does have the reduced max cooldowns and it has critical hits deal 4.5% less damage to you. This is still an absolutely amazing stat. This is still a stat that is gonna be best in slot for your gear. So it is still a great place to start. You are gonna be naturally squishy, but so is everybody else. So you still want this because there still are a lot of crits in the game and this is gonna help you. So make sure you get your faction gear. Now, when it comes to gems, I do have two Onyx and three Fire Wards, which are rubies. You can actually put stuff in there like this Elemental Ward. I think that's the Opal. Um, yes, the Opal. It's really good. It gives you just straight Elemental Absorption. We were doing Wars. I was never getting killed by the Ice Gauntlet. So I went with the Fire Ward, and I probably still like the Fire Ward a little bit better than Opal, just because 3.8% fire damage absorption is way more than 2.5 elemental from the open so i really like the two onyx three fire because this is really 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 good it's a ton it is just a huge number comparatively to the onyx gem which is 2.5 percent or the opal which is 2.5 there's some other things but i am really looking to mitigate more elemental than i am magic i'm sorry elemental than i am physical so as you can see here on my ring, we have a con ring. It doesn't matter whether you have con strength or con strength. You just want one of those two stats in there. And that's the only stat you want because then you kind of, as long as your points or your attributes here are at five, it's not a big deal. The big thing is you want to make sure you're just hitting these nodes. You want to make sure you can get to 300 con and then get as many points into strength as you possibly can. That's the reason why we're going with a con or strength in this piece of gear. When I crafted this, I was doing a bunch of con jewelry. I was looking for the slashing damage, which I got. Refreshing evasion isn't the greatest. You want some crit chance, crit damage. You can do something like that here. Um, the gem inside it, I have an element award. Again, you can do the rubies, do the onyxes. You can do whatever you want here. This is just kind of a place where you can help fill out your damage. Now, that is only gonna be the only piece of armor that we are gonna have that is crafted. Next, we have an ill-gotten gain. This is almost your best in slot piece of jewelry because it has refreshing toast and regenerating. Now, regenerating, I will admit, 
isn't the greatest it's one of the better stats earrings don't have a whole lot of great stats on them unless you're a healer i believe the healer does have a healing stat on it but for the most part um this is just going to be a great great earring to get i know it is only a 49 gear score but this gear score down here means absolutely nothing this gives you uh, pretty much no benefit and the only thing we would get here is we'd get a little bit extra onto our actual percentage points for our perks here and it would give us more con if you see here we have what 25 points on a con so we're missing five con on here and a couple percentage points on the right for those passives is all we are missing it's the difference between this at a 499 and a 600. now if you want to get this earring all you have to do is go in here to the lower slag mine there's a bunch of videos on it you can go there's a the first boss in there that you see you can go and kill him over and over again i think it took me like 10 minutes to get that earring it's really good I originally i have actual gear that's better than this higher gear score than this but the refreshing toast is by far the best perk you can have on an earring and the only thing that anybody can tell me is maybe if you are a healer i think they have a healing one other than that this is by far the most healing most just defenses you can possibly get in this and there's not really any offensive ones on your earring next we have the infinity crystal this amulet is absolutely insane it has strength divine which you gain 9.3 percent more health from all incoming healing effects fortify you apply last 14 percent longer which is okay and then you have nine percent more maximum health this is gained by doing your quest here in great cleave then you do quest here in eden's grove and then when you go up to shattered mountain there will be a quest for you to do i believe a ring first and then eventually you'll get this necklace which is absolutely insane for this build so we are for our armor we have nothing then we have one ring that's crafted you just really want some on that slashing damage you can get those two perks it's really good and other than that you just have quest item a guaranteed drop or at least a deterministic drop and faction gear really really cheap really easy next let's talk about our weapons uh here in the hammer this was just a weapon that we had crafted didn't really get anything really good on it uh we did have keenly jagged on a crit cause bleed that deals seven percent of weapon damage we essentially got that we, we ended up picking that perk just because it's going to give us a little bit extra damage when we are you know on our actual great axe bar if you can get the one where clear out knocks people back farther that's probably the best for you know overall utility for our wars and stuff like that but you know it's okay next we're going to talk about the great axe i actually just got this today so in all the clips this is not what i had what I originally had was a 545 with the rogue passive on it, and I tested it out, and this is a little bit more damage. The rogue one was still really good. Rogue is a better perk than enchanted currently, but with the 589 from 545, this was a little bit more damage, so we're going to try it out. So we just have strength, enchanted, that's all we really care about. It is a 589. But the perks you really want on here are Strength, Enchanted, Rogue, and Crit Damage if you can get it. Because we're going to be backstabbing people, especially in War, all the time. And it is absolutely busted damage. Now, Rogue does give you just straight critical damage currently. So it is essentially the highest damaging perk you can get in the game. But it will get nerfed eventually. And even when it gets nerfed, it's still going to be one of the things you need to have on your Great Axe if you can get a best in slot weapon. All right. So that is kind of the gear, that is the weapons. Uh, I, like I said, I am running the Void Bent. This is more of a PVE slash PVP type of setup. We do have full Onyx gems in here because this is very heavy on the elemental side. You can see here right now we are 513, 513. We're gonna put on our Void Bent. And we go to 1725 to 2156. So this is a lot better, has a lot more resistance on it than our gear, which is the reason why we're running it. And we can run it in PvP as well, but you don't need it. Almost all the clips you're gonna see was me in this armor and it does really, really well. Trust me, this is one of the best builds you can possibly play for PvP and it's not even close. You are so tanky. You are just, you do so much damage. It's insane. I've been getting top five kills, you know, top five assists, just all that stuff in wars over and over again and i'm running 300 con it's absolutely busted all right guys thanks for watching enjoy these clips that are coming after this i know this is long I was tr i've been trying to make this short shorter 
I actually recorded this before and I was like, this is way too long. And I still made the video very long. So we're gonna have clips after this. I'm sorry for the probably 25 minute video or and it'll probably be like 23 minutes when it's all said and done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think I missed anything. If you wanna know anything about my build, what I'm playing, what I'm doing, we're gonna be having more content for you. I'm sorry that it's been lackluster. I have been dealing with some IRL shit. We've been moving, we've been dealing with house stuff and that's all getting over with. We're gonna start streaming again. We're gonna be making more content. So like, comment, subscribe, follow the Twitch, Twitter, all that good stuff. You can find it in the description down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy these clips and I hope I'll see you in a turn. Bye.